Why do we work? Why do I draw? There are many reasons why I draw, more than the fact that I love to and that it defines my passions. I draw to create, just like we work to create. And lately I've been thinking about God and the idea of creation. And it reminded me that all of us are created in the image of God. But what does it mean to be created in the image of God? Does it mean that all of us look like God? If so, then God would be as ugly as you and I. To be created in the image of God means God also accorded us the capacity to create our own environments and shape our lives. If God created heaven and earth in seven days, then it means we can also create our own heavens and earth in seven days. And what I would like to do is take you through the process of creating an artwork, which of course to me is my heaven and earth. And I'm going to take you through what I call the seven stages of creating rainbow colors on black and white. The first day. On the first day I stumbled upon a beautiful thought of a woman sitting in waiting somewhere out there. Call it an idea. Her beauty captured my attention and for a while I searched for her eyes which I could not see since she was set with her back to me. She was facing away to the distant hills that stretched far and high. I fell in love with the mystery of beauty I saw and knew that if I blinked an eye, it would all disappear, never to appear again. I quickly picked up my pencil and started sketching her body, carving her broad shoulders, capturing her slim back and rounding her voluptuous buttocks, balancing her sitting posture. I did not draw her head since she was not facing me. I marveled at my first steps of creation, pondered and said yes, then I rested. The second day. On the second day, I woke up with an idea to dress her, to cover her delicate buttocks with a piece of flowing cloth. This was good, and it covered her respectfully. Instead of drawing the back of her head, I gave to her a big hat that covered all of her head, which I then weaved carefully to give it prominence and symbolism of protection. This I did and completed to my satisfaction. The hat protected her from the scorching sun and I was happy to see her cloth blowing with the gentle midday breeze. Later I introduced three pillows to cushion her buttocks right where she was sitting to give her all the comfort in her waiting. I retreated and looked at my day's work, nodded my head in fulfillment and went back to rest. The third day. On the third day I decided to capture a bit of scenery so that there was emotion to her waiting game. I toiled hard through the empty landscape, erecting mountains that towered all the way to the horizon where the eye can see no more. The gigantic mountains combined well with their majestic posture and together they created the music of passing time to her waiting game. I was pleased. Then I remembered that the previous day I had given to her a protective hat. I picked up the pencil and commanded it to position the glowing sun over the stretching mountains so that the purpose of the hat could be properly defined. It all looked good for a day's labor. I was tired and knew it was time to retire, to rest and meditate, to refresh and ponder on my next step. The fourth day. On the fourth day, I decided to give her some belongings, her firewood that she had collected just before resting to wait, a beer calabash that boasts a ring of beads to symbolize her cultural sophistry, a food bag full enough to last her through her eternal waiting game. I also gave her a huge water jug filled with water to quench her thirst through the passing days in blistering heat. I then returned to the calabash and gave it a design and the same I awarded the towering water jug. Later, I draped the water jug in cloth so that her belongings radiated with personality, all reflective of her boldness, delicate sense of choice, and reflections of re resilience. The cloth on the water jug was for her to use to cover herself when the sun goes down and the weather turns cold. I stood back and inspected this cluster and was happy that it all seemed to be coming together in perfect harmony. I settled down, drew a breath of fresh air, and again rested. 
the fifth day. On the fifth day, I looked at the developments and knew that a lot still had to be done to complete my creation. The pillows were still positioned on rough terrain, and this was opposing the sense of comfort that I had sought to portray right from the beginning. It was also contrary to the majesty of the scenery that had been set so far. I went down on my knees and started leveling the ground with an aim of tiling under the pillows. This was a cumbersome and delicate process where I could not afford to spoil the pillows with dust, mud and cement. When I finished leveling the ground, I started with the tiling. Marble tiles were my selection. I measured everything carefully so that the layout was professional and free of fault. The edges of the tiles had to be trimmed in the best choice of wood to continue with the theme of sophistry. I traveled over the hills and collected the best of natural wood which I carved and fitted as trimmings. The tiles and wood were then polished so that the gleam shone with the rays of the sun above. When all was done and the sun was about to set, I fell into a deep sleep where I dreamt of what was to come the following day. The sixth day. On the sixth day my mind was weary and my muscles were burning from five days of galloping thoughts and endless hard work in construction. All had been done, but it was very difficult to separate the clustered symbols from one another. As much as all had been done and got to be, it still looked cold and lifeless. So I said, let there be life, and my hand and pencil joined together in giving dark shades around each symbol, and slowly the, cl the cluster started separating itself into units that stood alone, yet together they gathered to create the whole idea. My hand tenderly guided the pencil to shade around the pillows, around her body, around the calabash, all the way to the cloth around the water jug and the mountain range. It all came to life, and for the first time I could see the lady's eyes in the resilience of her patience to wait. There were beautiful eyes that pierced through my soul, and as they met with mine, I knew that everything around her had its own life. I paused to marvel at my thoughts transforming into reality, and in the process interacting with me. I could not take it anymore and collapsed into a deep slumber. In my sleep, I experienced a dream of life where together with the lady we waited for eternity to find us. I named her Linda, the lady in waiting, and she smiled and gave me a kiss of life as she turned her back to me and waited forevermore. It was a dream that transformed me never to be the same again. Only the next day would see me rise again as born anew. The seventh day. On this day I looked at it all and was satisfied with the beauty and life of my creation. I was amazed at how life emerges so easily from a background of black and white and still offers us with the choice to add any colors to complete our reality the way we choose to see it, interpret its diversity, interact with its dynamic symbols and create meaning out of it. I had my own idea of which colors would sit best with what I had created. So I looked up to the skies above the mountains and shouted, let there be color. Clouds started drifting in a dance so spectacular and the sun rays made everything so bright and true. This is when the most magical experience to ever touch my life unveiled itself before my eyes. The spectrum of the rainbow emerged from within the lady in waiting and started painting rainbow colors on black and white. Suddenly the clouds had their colors. The water jug turned bronze and I could see the clay color on the pots. Her hat was a beautiful touch of soft red and the sunbeams tanned her silky skin. The pillows were light yellow satin and I could smell the slight scent of decay in her brown wood that she had collected before she set to wait. I was overwhelmed with emotion and I cried tears of joy and appreciating that the mystery, the mystery of complete creation had been unveiled before my eyes. I knelt and prayed. For once I knew that as one created in the image of God, like him I also have the simple inborn capacity to create. I felt so complete. Oh,